So TikTok has established itself as a major force in the social media landscape with 102 million users in the United States. And recently the app has also been a hotbed of political activity and controversy. Uh, investigations have revealed some concerning aspects uh, of the algorithm, such as pushing anxiety and depression to teenagers who may be vulnerable to that kind of content. Uh, the app has also been accused of exposing user data to the Chinese government and promoting certain narratives over others. Now, both of these claims are denied by TikTok, but that hasn't stopped a recent push for banning the app in the United States. TikTok is already banned in India, and recently lawmakers in the US passed a bipartisan bill forcing the app to be sold within the next nine months or the app would be banned. And TikTok has already sued the US government over First Amendment violations. So all this to say, uh, there's a lot of controversy and many conflicting narratives around the social media platform. And at the same time, there's a dearth of research on the platform, uh, the recommendation algorithm, and the data that it collects. So our work extends two uh, investigations of the algorithm. In 2022, Becker and Ehrman investigated the factors of the TikTok algorithm that most contribute to personalization. They used a sock puppet auditing technique, which involved uh, creating bots that impersonate real users. And they found that the follow feature, followed by liking and watch time, most closely dictate what videos the recommendation algorithm shows. And importantly, their study connected to the TikTok website and did not investigate the mobile app. In another investigation uh, of the platform in 2021, the Wall Street Journal uh, looked at the extent to which TikTok recommends harmful content based on watch time. And while they used the mobile platform for this investigation, it lacked the scientific rigor of a peer-reviewed study. And so between these two studies, there is a gap of scientifically rigorous investigation of the mobile app. So. Um, why study the mobile app? Uh, so first, the majority of users access TikTok through the mobile app, um, over 80%. But little is known about any potential differences between the two platforms. So are there different rates of personalization? Uh, are the two platforms serve different kinds of videos? In this talk, I'm going to seek to answer those questions, or start to answer them at least. And another motivating question pertains to advertisements. We were only able to consistently receive ads on the mobile platform. And very little is known about the TikTok advertising platform and the level of ad personalization uh, based on the content that a user watches. So we hope to look into this in the future. So this leads us to our first research question. How can we study the TikTok mobile app? We want to be able to perform audits that are similar to uh, those that Becker and Ehrman were able to do. But instead of using sock puppets on the web, we want to somehow simulate the mobile platform. So to simulate the mobile app, we'll be using Android emulators, which we can launch through Android Studio. And we can connect to them through ADB, Android Debug Bridge, and we can control them through UI Automator 2. So to collect data about the TikToks that our devices are delivered, we can parse the content of the screen. And we can grab the username, we love dogs, and the description, uh, leisure time, hashtag dogs, and so on. And we can also get the number of likes, comments, saves, and shares, which are truncated to the nearest thousand or million. However, we can't gather the video's ID, the URL, or the number of times that it's been played. On the website, however, there is a metadata field which contains this missing data as well as a number of other parameters. We can gather this data if we figure out what the URL is, but how can we find the URL? So to answer this question, let's take a look at how the TikTok app works. TikTok sends requests to TikTok for uh, to the TikTok server and receives responses about uh, the data of the videos that it'll be served. Now we want to intercept this, so we can construct a man in the middle to intercept this traffic. The requests and responses are encrypted with SSL, which prevents the end user from intercepting and reading the requests and responses. Now, ordinarily, we would get around this by installing our own custom certificate on the device, but TikTok implements certificate pinning. So it doesn't trust our certificate, meaning it won't allow the transmission anymore. So to get around this, we need to unpin the certificate. Now, luckily, there's an active community that makes code available, which modifies apps to unpin the certificate, which we can use to enable us to properly intercept the network traffic. So now we can analyze the responses. 
And we can look into the responses to gather a list of URLs for each video that's shown to the device. And we can follow these URLs to the website, web page for a video. And we can hit the TikTok website to get the HTML. Now, if we take a closer look in this HTML, we can see this fields, universal data for rehydration. We can grab this element out of the HTML and process uh, the JSON to give us a uh, dictionary like this, which contains all of the metadata that we might be interested in. So now we are able to audit the TikTok mobile app. We can gather all of this uh, metadata, and uh, which this enables us to start answering questions about the platform. So we started with this question. How does the TikTok web algorithm differ from the mobile app algorithm? Is the level of personalization the same? And are the videos that it shows to users similar? So to answer this question, we need to figure out how our bots are going to decide to watch a video. Becker and Ehrman used hashtag matching, where they looked at whether a video contained a hashtag in a list of hashtags, which represent certain interests. Uh, there are a few problems with this approach, however. Uh, first, not all videos have hashtags, so they would automatically be skipped. And second, some videos may have irrelevant hashtags, which would result in potentially false positives. So we therefore decided to use ChatGPT. We can give ChatGPT a prompt related to some interest. So for example, you are a TikTok user who only watches cooking videos. And we feed it metadata such as the description, hashtags, and the username for a given video. And it will return back the decision of whether it decides to watch the video. So for our experiment setup, we will have two different types of devices. The first are treatment devices, which will watch videos related to cooking, as determined by ChatGPT, all the way through. And it will skip all the other videos after uh, one to five seconds. And this one to five second range is done to avoid TikTok determining that we're a bot. And the second device will watch no videos all the way through. These are the control devices. And they will only skip videos after that same one to five second pause. So we will have two treatment devices and one control device for each of our types of device, which are emulators and webs. And this allows us to compare the two treatment groups together to understand their similarities and compare those to the baseline control group. And we run all emulator devices simultaneously. We tried to run all of the web devices simultaneously as well, but we noticed that we were consistently not getting any personalization which changed when we decided to run them sequentially. So we therefore decided to run the three web devices one after another. Additionally, the data for the treatment devices starts when the devices see the first video related to cooking. So if one device took until video 10 to watch a cooking video, and another didn't see one until video 20, the first 10 from the first device and the first 20 from the second would be ignored, and the data would start on video 10 and 20 respectively. And this is done to control for the amount of time it may see to see the first cooking related video. It might differ between devices. And we don't do this for the baselines because we want to understand overall how many cooking videos we can expect to see in the in absence of any interaction. So let's take a look at the results now. So we're gonna look at the web devices first. And on the Y axis here, we have the total number of videos that the web device watched. And on the x-axis, we have the index of the video, which is the position in the feed where a video was watched. Looking at this graph for the two web devices, web treatment devices, we see that over time, the devices see more and more videos related to cooking as they watch videos related to that content. And when we add the baseline at the bottom there, uh, we see that we don't see that same level of increase over time, which suggests to us that there is personalization happening. When we add the data from the emulators, we see that they overall watch more videos than the web devices. Uh, the blue lines are uh, overall much higher than the green. But we also see that they have a higher baseline. So to be precise, overall, the web treatment devices watch an average of 36.5 videos. And the baseline saw five cooking videos, which means that the treatment watched 7.3 times more uh, than the baseline. In contrast, the emulator watched an average of 64 cooking videos, and the baseline saw 21 videos. So that is a 3.04 times the baseline. 
Um, but there's this really sharp difference between the baselines, which sort of makes this difficult to interpret. Finally, we're going to take a look at the similarity between the feeds of the devices. We use a cumulative Jacquard index over the video ID, which measures the similarity between two sets. So on the y-axis, we have that Jacquard index. And we note that a Jacquard index of 1 would mean that the two sets are perfectly identical. And 0 would mean they have no common elements. And on the x-axis, we have the cumulative index of the videos. When we look at the similarity in the feeds between our two web treatment devices, there's a lot of noise in the beginning. But we see that overall, the feeds grow more and more similar as they watch uh, more cooking videos. And when we compare it to the two emulator treatment devices, um, those devices, we see something similar. The feeds start out very unlike each other in the beginning, and they rapidly grow more and more alike. And we see the gains in similarity start to flatten out, eventually settling into a jacquard of around 0.2, which is about where the web devices ended up as well. When we look at a comparison of their baselines, this red line at the bottom, we see uh, a jacquard index of 0. So in other words, we see no videos in the feeds of both the web and the emulator when we aren't watching specific videos. And finally, when we look at comparison, comparing each of the web and emulator devices to each other, we consistently see very low similarity. We see some here and there, but the cooking videos and the other videos suggested to the web devices seem to be very different from those suggested to the emulator devices. So taken together, our work demonstrates a framework that enables auditing the mobile app. We also conducted a preliminary study comparing our technique to existing uh, auditing infrastructures. And we find that the web platform does show personalization at similar levels to the mobile platform. However, when looking at content of the videos delivered to the devices, we see high levels of dissimilarity between the feeds of the two platforms, suggesting that the videos a user sees may change depending on the platform they use. In the future, we plan to uh, replicate these experiments to understand uh, whether it's consistent and scrape more than the 250 videos that this study showed. And we're also interested in further exploring these results. Uh, very curious about the reasons that the web baseline is so low and why there's such low similarity between the web and mobile feeds. Our methodology can also be expanded to answer other types of questions, such as analyzing how advertisements are personalized to TikTok users based on the content they watch, and the formation of harmful content rabbit holes and filter bubbles based on watch time. Uh, thank you so much. Very happy to answer any questions.